Human trafficking is not a problem out there in someone else's neighborhood. It's all around you and the numbers are rising. In this episode, I talk with David Reed, founder of Red M, the nonprofit organization made up of everyday professionals making a difference in the lives of sex trafficking survivors. It is our hope that after this conversation, you will be better informed and feel comfortable to talk about trafficking with others and find your place within the Red M movement. David shares how corporate executives, politicians, and individuals like you and me can help those that have overcome so much. I hope that you listen to the entire episode because at the end, we talk about some of the signals of trafficking. And now, David Reed. Just to kind of start things off, I guess, just a little bit, we will kind of, I guess I can kind of pull from your uh, website. I pulled a little thing together and then you can kind of fill in uh, sure. the things. But basically, Red M, which you are basically the head of, it's a nonprofit organization that is, quote, passionate about seeing lives transformed in the aftermath of sexual exploitation and we exist because we believe that sex trafficking survivors deserve more than rescue. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll just kind of start there. Um, what is the feeling of someone that's just come out of this experience? And I know that you want to be mindful of not being too heavy. Yeah. But I think if people can get a sense of that person and how we can sure. all help, I think that'd be great. Well, and people, there's a lot of misunderstandings um, in what, what is often just prostitution. And people think that's a thing. That, that somehow someone aspired to and chose in their life. But um, what's happened, of course, is that these people are, um, most people think of the movie Taken, and it, it's, not, it's, not there, it's not very accurate. It's very rare. There was, a, there was an example recently in Dallas, and everyone's quoting it back to me. I'm like, it's kind of 2% of total trafficking. It's happening a lot. Um, but when they come out, what's happened is every event that happens to them constitutes... Um, a mental uh, response that is the same as a rape. Uh, and in most cases, it is rape. And then also the way that they, they manage and control people in the sex trafficking game is that it's psychological. And so if you imagine someone who's gone into a cult, they don't go into a cult thinking, I'll go into a cult. They, they, they get drawn in and they start to trust people and it, become, it, goes, it gets weird later. That's exactly what a lot of the trafficking is at this point. And so there's this uh, brain has been wired wrong. And so you have to help them to understand because they, they try to make people think they're choosing this. They set them up the exact same way every time. Get them to you often fall in love or feel connected. Uh, and then, then they break that trust. But by that time, they're in what's called Stockholm Syndrome. And so you're actually doing very complicated work. Uh, the trauma carries, it, it's it's with them the rest of their lives. If you imagine someone who went to war, um, they carry that trauma. There's just trying to manage um, your ability to function. Um, so there's cleaning that up, and then there's the rewiring um, of the brain that has been trained that this is all you'll ever do. This is who you are. This is where you belong. And so that that's, it's, a, it's quite a big uh, um chunk of work that has to happen with each individual to get them from a survivor meaning they got out um, which seems like well surviving seems like not a hard thing but it is I mean once people have been in a certain amount of time in trafficking we don't know where they go which isn't good right. so coming out is good and then getting them to a point of uh, an overcomer someone who really can just live life and, and gain a, access to a life they were told they could never have again yeah, not be defined by that instance. Right. It makes it hard. I mean, one of the most powerful things you can do is have those people speak. Um, but if they ever speak on camera and it's out there for the rest of their lives, they'll be known as that. And that's not what they want. What they want is to have a life back. And, and the traffickers have built in things to make sure. that They'll aim at young on purpose, 12 to 14. It's kind of one of their core areas they target because of the weakness of a, a teenager's mind. And the stress and the, the upset about family or whatever else, you know, friends, acceptance. They'll use all of those things to manipulate. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, they'll they'll make sure they get a conviction. So they'll, they'll put them in places where you're likely going to get arrested. Once they have a conviction on their record, they're, they're not going to work. I mean, if they do work, there's jobs you can do, but not not seriously develop or care for yourself. All right. So they avoid life skill development. 
uh, you know, survival skills, just normal things that people would get in life going through their mid to late teens. Um, and then they uh, have no means of really working. And so that, that causes them to come back. The, the recidivism rate is about 80%. So if you went and rescued everyone today, about 80% of them would go back. Yeah, the one person that I saw in researching, um, yeah, she's like, yeah, I'm not shackled. Yeah, I can come and go as I please. Yeah. But there was, like you said, that mind game of... It's very strange when you when you get into it, especially. I mean, we've been going through this with a friend recently where her daughter's trafficked. And it looks like she's not, you know, and she's pretending she's not. So, I mean, there's texts, there's stories about what she's doing at work and... She's been living in different places, but it, that's where we had to do some detective work and then say, look, here she is doing these things. And so it's a, it's become very masked. Often the traffickers will either um, punish them or, or manipulate them to tell these stories. Sometimes they'll threaten the families if, if this gets out or we'll do something to your family. or And so they try and keep it because they're protecting their own families. So, yeah, it's very, very complicated. It's, yeah. very, it, it's hard to believe. Um, but it is it is growing and growing around us, and so the the understanding becomes really important. An ultimate objective for us, uh, we do want to help survivors, but we also want to educate people in a way um, that is tangible. So when people actually join, we're a volunteer organization. We like to have people do work. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, just a little bit of something, because you you start to get closer to the subject. Um, and and slowly people will learn what grooming looks like, and that's been really useful yeah, for definitely. people to know. Because when you're you don't know your kids are being groomed, um, so you have to be aware and tuned in to what's happening. Um, and then isolation, they start to isolate the kids, and then then it's a question of they usually move, will move a child across the state border if you can catch before them, which we have recently. One of our leaders at Red M, because she's been around it recognized things in her child and went, oh, wait a minute, and find out that she was about to be trafficked. So we did a background check on the boyfriend and, and we were able to see, yeah, this is about to happen. Oof. And um, so we managed to save a child and that's, that's, oh, that's good wonderful. news, you know. And we have the opposite where people have lost their child, um, just suddenly gone. Um, and we've had to do some work in Houston. We've had executives in oil and gas who've had their kids taken and we've had to mm -hmm. go find them and bring them back. So yeah. yeah, it's a it's a and time is a big deal. Like when when they're gone, you know, they'll they'll start to disappear from sight, you know. So I think that uh, the way that you're going about combating this issue, because it does seem to be kind of a multi front of education, also, mm. but it also seems like you're reaching, you know, top executives, top companies, sure. again to raise that volume. Can you share some of that? Uh, yeah, what you've been doing there. Well, um, it really originally what I thought or understood is there's there's definitely a generational thing where this younger generation wants to do things. They want to get hands on involved in doing things. Um, not very good at giving. You know, they tend to not be donators, but they tend to be donators of time. And so that that was kind of one of my first things was I saw there was work to be done just helping these organizations to communicate. So that's really how we started. But professionals started to turn up and then companies started to turn up that were large, you know, IBM, Microsoft. I mean, those, oh, yeah, those, those are those, definitely yeah, big yeah, names. Big, uh, Amazon's been with us a long time. So they, they started to turn up and then it started to be a question of what, what can we do as companies? And so that's evolved. And my own company, I mean, they have saw, saw that I'm doing this work and we've had a lot of people rally around and, and want to do things. And, and we even did it with, uh, we started a really high-end golf tournament and it was trying to reach the C-suite. Um, and the reason is it's not that, that you have to just reach them. Of course, if you're trying to get finances, it's great to reach those people. Sure. Um, but our goal was to get finances, but as a tool, you know, as well as the same thinking with people and volunteering it's a tool to get people to connect to the story in a way that is not going deep into the story we don't we don't depress people there's there's a ton of really difficult information in the middle of this and so we don't spend a lot of time on that we we get people to accept there's an issue i need to do something and then we give them something to do Wonderful. for some people it's time and talent and others it's just their treasure you know what they've got you know so they're busy but they can give money 
Um, and so it's really giving everyone a chance to get around it. The, the real goal is that society starts talking. Because if, if they become aware and it becomes a subject we can talk about without ruining the evening, which right. most times you go deep, it's too heavy a subject. And so people turn off and don't pay attention. Um, so they just need a little bit of information. But if we can get everyone doing that, that affects politicians, that affects the policing. Um, sure. I mean, what happened early was we had a, in our first, maybe second meeting, everyone was talking about what they did and someone was an FBI wiretapper and said, well, I've been doing wiretapping, but when we come across human trafficking, we're told to leave it alone because it's not a big enough issue for society. Oh, wow. Drugs and guns are what we're looking for. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, obviously with the Uvalde. It's definitely a yeah, yeah. Top, uh, top headline. Right. So so it's uh, it became became obvious at that point, this is really the goal, is that everyone starts to see that it's not okay. I mean, we're living in a massive crisis. The worst slavery conditions in the history of mankind are, are happening around us. And and it can be shocking. We can You can use shock. You can use big numbers. You can use, because it's all hard to believe because it's in plain sight, but it's cleverly designed. So that it looks like looks like a runaway. If you can get a child to leave a family as a runaway, the police aren't chasing because there's a time limit. Okay, we'll see. It, you know, is it a runaway? And we'll we'll have to wait and see. Could they be back tomorrow? And so that that mechanism uh, protects the traffickers because they get to go further and and get get further away. It gives buys them time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's scary because mm. like those first few minutes, first few days. Yeah, they matter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, how can we kind of bring it closer to home without kind of being too scareful? In a sense, like you know, is there a place where I've been around unknowingly and trafficking oh, is going on? Sure, me? sure, it is. I mean, just observing it, we don't want to harm businesses that are that are legitimately doing what they're supposed to be doing. But there are cases around us that would surprise you where trafficking is happening. The numbers are projected so high that, that, that it's around you. You're seeing it. Um, so just understanding that, that we have, it is around you. It is, there are things happening in trafficking. Um, people, even people who are trying to use sexually oriented businesses, they don't know they're involved in trafficking. They don't know that that's what's happening behind the scene. Hmm. And so there are people who choose that and... They get told by these women that they're the same story, which never seems to be suspicious to them, but they're always like, I'm going through college or I'm supporting and it's good uh, money. And we had a survivor live with us and I asked her, did, did men say you have the best job ever? And she said, yeah, almost all of them. Because mm. the perception was that they were choosing it and loving it. What a great way to make money. Um, and it's not. And so, yeah. but if they get off off of the script because it's a show that they're doing for someone to believe something that this is something they chose um then they get in trouble and so there's a lot of fear and intimidation that builds in and right. so there are people doing that who are just thinking you know two consenting adults you know paying for a service it's all good it's not you know yeah. so and we're uh, conducting this interview in houston mm -hmm. obviously is the number three number four city that obviously has, uh, Depends how you count it, but yeah, we were number <laughs> we were number one in reports oh, uh, wow. for trafficking. Okay, last oh, okay. Year. I was I was thinking population. -wise, population, but, we're but, up, yeah, we're so definitely you, up. I, I think we're. I guess we are bigger than Chicago at this point. So right. yeah, but yeah, but trafficking, we 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 hit number one on reporting. Oh, um, usually, everyone says Atlanta is bigger. Um, I'm not sure. There's a there's a pimp culture that will will blur the reporting because it's part of the whole scene and pimp culture. Then makes it okay so people don't recognize it and so you right. don't see as much reporting. So DC was number two last year's report. Oh wow. So yeah, that was I was speaking in DC and I'm like, guess what? You're <laughs> making it up the charts. But yeah. people perceive that it's Houston and Atlanta the bigger the bigger cities and traffic. Why is that what is Houston uh, why is that attractive to <sighs> Well as a DC made me think differently about it all, but but often it's being near a border, especially the originally originally there was a lot of international trafficking was the was the method. Uh, so being near a border, being near freeways, major freeways that go across the country. Um, that was kind of the understanding, large city, isolated males, places where people come uh, with a lot of money and they spend time. So big big oil show, OTC. 
um, the football stadium, big events. Yeah, sure. We anything like that. Right. Anytime you get you get males isolated, then the traffickers will will push their their product nearer. Um, and we see that we see people telling stories, you know, of how they were moved and what they were moved, they were moved for. Um, so a lot of that a lot of that will happen. Um, uh, DC, I think international also affects us because there's a lot of international trafficking that was happening. There's a, there's a sex tourism business where people go and they you know they pay for sex in other countries. Um, so I think that, and it's an addiction issue. So you, you mix all of that together, and you end up with with um, a big city like Houston being a good target for the traffickers and for the market. Yeah, I heard you speak, and you were saying that uh, over the years we've kind of shut down the border a little bit, and that's kind of hindered uh, the international aspects. So now the U.S. like domestic trafficking yeah, is on the rise. It, ha- it is. We're, I mean, once again, the numbers are very, you know, trying to extrapolate from experiences, but but they think about 82% as, as American in, in trafficking. Um, and I, I'm, that's my perception is I know that I know the people who do rescue work um, saw a decline for the, the last administration four years. They had very, very few, almost no cases of international um, trafficking. Didn't mean there wasn't trafficking happening. It meant that it was being restrained behind a border. Right. Sometimes we do things that people think are right and it turns out to not, it's just making us feel better. So uh, there, 1960 had a lot of trafficking going on it. A lot of complaints, they tried to shut it down. So yeah, sure, a lot of places got shut down. There's still a lot of places there um, that are trafficking, but but um, all you're doing is moving it. You know, you're actually getting it away from you so you don't see it. Right. We had we had some great people who got the you know the the main method of doing the business of buying sex was happening on Backpage and uh, um, there was another site I can't remember but they shut them down for for doing that. Um, it just meant they went to another website. You didn't you didn't yeah. really do anything. You you stopped. It actually was harder to track because we were able to track easier when it was more public. Yeah. But it moved it more to the dark web, but it didn't stop anything. And so sometimes we're trying to stop things and we end up just pushing them away from us. So, Yeah, which I guess in the short term makes people feel better. But yeah, long term, it doesn't. It's uh, not, it's doesn't not helping really. anyone. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and I, that's what we enjoy in Red M. It's really a collection of professionals and business people thinking differently. And so we keep coming up with strategies that will have more of an effect. And that, that's kind of helpful. So I, I think we'll we'll offer services to organizations, um, but you know because we HR is one they all need help with. So we have an HR group. Okay. And we'll just keep keep working on ways that we can actually help the survivor services um, groups to grow and to to be more impactful. But also the the work of doing that once again is to get the attention of the government so that we we get it prioritized. Let's look at it from a couple of different uh, viewpoints. So I'm a, an executive at a company. What are, what are some things that you and Redmond have do, uh, Redmond, sorry Redmond. About that, Red M, uh, have been doing uh, that I can do? And then we'll kind of go down the line, individuals, and then we'll kind of sure. go down politicians. So first off, executives. What can executives well, they can, do? The most powerful thing they have is what I do, which is talking, you know, bringing it into your conversation if you're comfortable doing it. Um, then your company can do more. Obviously, donation is something. We, we definitely encourage that. Moving money towards organizations that are spending it wisely. We, we measure the use of the finances of the organizations we work with to make sure it goes to survivors. And it is humanitarian because there's a temptation in the space to spend towards just awareness because it's easier or to do other things that are easier and, and not as cost intensive as recovery. So we tend to be pushing towards the recovery side because it's expensive. Um, you can engage your company. There's lots of different things that have happened. Some uh, some groups have done awareness days where they'll come in and they'll educate. Um, our favorite is when we can get people to do something. Um, our corporation got um, our marketing department actually built a museum for the airport. And during OTC, we did an education piece where we brought in survivors who'd been trafficked through the airport. Oh, wow. And the people in the airport who've been watching videos but not catching anyone got to meet traf- people who've been trafficked, which they were starting to believe maybe there aren't any. 
until they saw real people and made a connection that they're normal people. They're not what I was thinking. You know, um, we actually had a lady there who was a 10 year old who was trafficked through IEH to Lubbock um, every weekend. And so she, she, she actually came in her job capacity and we had her story there. Um, and she said, this was me. <laughs> so oh, I was wow. like, wow, do you, do you want to talk? And she did. So she got up and that was so effective for people to even the unimaginable, you know, that, that a 10 year old would be trafficked through IEH looking just like a normal kid. Um, so I, I think it, it was really good for people's awareness. But what was great on our side was our employees got to get involved and run something. And so it was very effective. We worked with Houston Airport. So it was a, but it was a good way for, a, for an executive to say, okay, let's, let's go do something. And so we, we have a few of those projects. There's events. Yes. We're here at the ION today. And yeah. so the three, three partners, companies we're talking with, Schlumberger, Chevron, Microsoft, you know, so we're going to actually do, we have an educational series we're going to do here. So we do a leadership. It's called Conscious Leadership. And so we, we do have three classes we do. So we're going to do one of those here and they'll be sponsored with those those oh, companies. Wonderful. And then yeah. we're also doing a launch of an organization that's going to do uh, how, helping employment. So once you've gone through the recovery process, how do you get a job? That's a that's a big issue. And so there's a survivor-led organization, overcomer is the right word, an overcomer-led organization that she's kind of working on how do we get people work. And so we're going to launch that here in October. So, but that's an opportunity for companies to get involved and sponsor and be a part of and have their employees, you know, be a part of an event, which, which we do a lot of where companies will say, I'm going to take this event we're going to, we're going to supply people to you. So, yeah. And that's a great segue into like individuals. Yeah. So now I've heard my executive or I've heard you and Red M talk, mm -hmm. um, how can I get involved? Obviously money, but what else? What are yeah. some key points? So you've seen? the website is joinredm.com you go on there there's four categories you can kind of say this is the level i feel comfortable or you know i want to help promote events and like I'll, I'll go get people that there's a lot of sales people will go okay i'll jump in i'll get you sponsors or i'll get you people for your golf tournament or whatever it is oh nice so there's that um there's people who actually just want to do their take their professional skills and use them I'd like to develop logos. I, I want to do film. I'd like to do podcasts. I'd like to, we've, we find ways, doesn't matter what your profession is, we find ways to engage it uh, with these survivor organizations. So there's, there's, we, we almost are looking for work to do. We have a lot of people. There's over 500 people have done work for us. Oh, wonderful. So we just, we just will invent things because it, it lets us all go do something. And so whatever your skills are, and that's a great place. We had one professional turn up and say, well, I'm, I'm a flamenco dancer. And I was like, me too. <laughs> who who's, who's, who that's says that? I'm like, I, have you ever met one? No. I was like, really? It was such a, she was very serious. So I was like, okay, so, so how do we do something with that? And she goes, well, we could put on a show. So we did a Spanish night to remember. Oh, nice. She flew in musicians from Spain and some from Mexico. And we did. We had paella. We had a chef do that, and it was a beautiful <laughs> night. Sold out. A great awareness. And so, th what I like is every time we get something that is a new segment for a new market, that's what we want because we want to reach every part of society. So people come with their gifts and their skills and what they like, their hobbies, turn it into something. Someone just started saying they're going to do a car event. Okay, do that. And if if someone says I want to do that, you know they can lead it. Or they can have the idea and we'll, we'll staff it because we have lots of people looking to do work. So even if you're like, I'd just like to welcome people at an event, we can do that. Like, yeah. oh, but I'd like, to, I'd like to serve someone food. You know, I'd like to actually, we have a whole production crew that gets involved. We have multiple crews for oh, filming and for doing that kind of stuff. So it doesn't really matter. Or you get people who are, I'm new in this. I've, I've studied it, but I'm, I really want to grow my skills. You can go work with experts in that space. So, I mean, it, it, that goes as far as we actually have a film project that is going to need funding. So that's going to be interesting. But that's a full high-end yeah. kind of movie-style story. Oh, nice. That, yeah. That'll be good. So, um, And then we just have jobs that are like, we need administrative people. We need finance people. We need, we're need. we looking at, as we start in different cities, um, we need to have process and procedure and so there's people who are doing that you know there, there's lots there's there's lots of things but we will make it up 
because when you do a bit of work towards the good of this, you learn more about it. You're involved and you feel like you're doing something. And we work hard for it to be meaningful so that we're, we're doing things that will make a difference. Yeah, I think that's super important to, like you said, the more people that get involved, now it's personal. Right. Now you're invested. Well, in and it's very light. I mean, we keep it really light. We don't spend a lot of time talking about the problem. There'll be times being a part of this that you will learn about it. Um, but that's really at your own pace, your own speed. And some people are like, I don't need more. I believe it's bad. I just want to help. Right. And that's cool. And you'd be surprised. We have a lot of fun together. Like, it's great people, very talented people. Everybody loves doing a good job at what they do. And because they're professionals, we're really aiming high yeah. in the quality of work that we do. And so it's it's a really fun group. And everyone enjoys doing it. It's strange to be having that much fun. <laughs> knowing you're doing it for such a dark subject, but right. but but it's it's necessary. You can't stay in the subject. It's too much. No, and you do hear that sometimes there is a silver lining of community and, and bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And I think by everyone coming together, that is helping the cause and yeah. push it away and become more aware. Well, it's socializing it too, because yeah. I think that's what when society is doing things, normal things that they do every day, and and it's giving to fighting trafficking, then then the politicians will pay attention. Yeah, that's a great segue. Like, so, you know, if I'm a politician, what would you say to me? How can I get involved? Well, that's interesting. They do ask. They ask for, like, endorsement, and I'm like, no, we absolutely can't do that. Pol bipartisan work is the only way. Yeah, if, if you want to make it your cause, um, that's great. Do but work with others. Right? Don't don't see it as a, a, a party issue. It's not a party issue. We need everyone who's in to be working on this, thinking about this and fighting it. It's, it's Society has to rise up. So you're a part of that picture, whoever you are, whatever you're doing. And what, uh, if they could only do one law in the next six months or one... No, oh, they're initiative. doing. They're doing them. We're, we're, yeah. We've seen what's, changes. What's There's a place where you've seen some change for the good? The biggest one. So if you look at who is the best in the world at fighting sex trafficking, Sweden. Sweden. Oh. Yeah. Why? IKEA? No. <laughs> <laughs> Volvo? Right, no. Agreed. No. It's not that. It's not their cool products. No. They um. They recognized the demand is where to go after it, and so they they didn't fight the traffickers. Um, they made the buying of sex illegal, and then they actually made it like they made it public. Like when someone was caught, they they go to go to prison for numbers of years, mm. um, buying you know especially minors. I mean that's the that's the big ugly truth is there's a ton of underage. Uh, um, I, I, it's not even underage sex. It's it's rape, right? So that's what it is. When, once once if they're underage. So the, but they make it public. And so Texas was the first state to say it is illegal now. Oh, yeah, it was illegal, but it was like a $500 fine and you're out in the morning and no one ever knew. Now it's like 10 plus years in, in prison. So, And they go on a list or something like? Yeah, what hasn't happened is the public thing that the, that the Swedes are doing because there's, there's no real public. This person is going to prison it's like it's still quiet i wish it was more public because there are stings we've set up in town where we'll take these um massage illicit massage parlors we'll close one we'll put in a police operation and they'll just start arresting people so we had about i think the first one i saw was 86 people in five days they they, oh, wow. they arrested so yeah i hear about those every now and then but yeah well there's you'll hear about the big ring busts which are just often large houses we've had single ranch and woodlands and they're, they're, it's strange. They're in normal, yeah. you know, in plain sight around really nice neighborhoods. Oh wow! Um, but those things happened, and you'll see those in the press. But 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 the, this is this is actually just taking taking the the Johns as they call them out, you know, and saying so. We need that story to get out because those who are you know using services and being involved in human trafficking, not knowing yeah. usually, but they need to know, and they need to know it's illegal and. Uh, that's that's the best deterrent where it's actually a problem, you know. As long as everyone's kind of making it okay, letting it happen around us without really being aware, um, you really need the laws, and, and that that's a that's a good law. There's there's others. They've been raising um, the age of uh, strippers. I think I believe any sexually oriented business they, where it's a legal setup, 
Um, they, I think they raised it to 21. I think they got that oppressed. There's people who work in that space. I don't. I'm, I'm not working yeah. the political side. I'm letting people who do that do that, but I stay very much in the engagement of people and in, in, in raising our awareness because it's, it's really hard with anybody in our country. They choose um, their political side. <laughs> Yeah. And then it just gets weird. So I'm I'm pretty politically neutral. Like it's hard to get me to. Yeah, go right. on. Your whole organization is you know you're not faith. Not faith. Yeah. No faith based. No, and not because that's wrong. But but a lot of the organizations are faith based. But we we create a barrier so that um, we can do assessments for are these organizations. Um, doing humanitarian work? Are they just helping survivors? They're not trying to convert survivors or they're not trying to, you know, do do other things with churches, which is great. It's great that it happens. But for businesses, they can't support that. If you're doing a lot of church, you know, there, this is this, we've got prayer groups or we've got, if you're doing all these things, that, that's great that that happens, but that's not supportable by businesses because they, they, it's a bit harder for them when they have, you know, international businesses all faiths, all types, they can't be favoring any faith. And so they, they can't really do that easily. So yeah, so we, we're very neutral on the on the faith side. Nice. Um, we will work, a lot of the organizations are faith-based. We just, we just filter and make sure they're doing humanitarian work. Um, and then politi- politically, we have no, yeah, absolutely neutral. Yeah, no, I think that's a great way to well, go. Well, it's a society issue. It's not yeah, a faith right? issue. It's not a political <laughs> issue. It's a, we, this is not okay. And we need everyone saying it's not okay. In fact, as simple as that is, that's the strongest thing we can get everyone saying on the subject. People get very hyped. And when you show the emotions and you let the um, the details come out every time you talk to people on the subject, you just lose people. Yeah. Because they can't cope with the subject. And so they choose to just protect their kids a bit more. That's not enough for change. Right. So we need to have enough information and a very strong stance by everybody. I think everyone fundamentally, when you explain it for what it is, which is modern day slavery, are you in? Are you a supporter? Pro or con? You know, what do you think? Right, Let's discuss. Yeah. There's no discussion. It's a bad thing and we don't want it in our society and it's rising. And now we have to put a stop to it. So that's that's a that basic position. Not hard to get everyone on that same page, but we need to be on that page. Yep, you need people talking and you need yeah. people getting involved. Yeah, yeah. Now, this has been a great conversation um, and definitely very enlightening. And hopefully uh, we've been able to put some more light on the subject and what uh, Red M is doing. Sure. You know, and I'm not sure if this kind of gets into the two darkness, but is there some signs, some easy like signs of your parent that maybe? Yeah, uh, sure. The, the things, people? well, there's things to watch for. Um, giving access to social media is something to watch for. Teaching kids to never, never, never interact online with people you don't know. Um, that doesn't protect them completely, but that clears a lot of the ground. Gaming systems, um, there's an openness to gaming with anyone. Um, just like putting your kid on the street. It's just saying, hope hope it works out. And it might, but it might not. It's a very yeah. dangerous proposition to to just put them into systems that have no no barriers, no protections. So you have to get your kids to think that way. Um, you don't want them to be so scared they don't make friends, but you don't want them to be so open that, that you know, bad things can happen. Right. So, but, but the thing you can do is relate. Uh, for, for males to kids, um, that's actually one of the source issues is, is fathers with kids understanding how to relate to a, a daughter, to a son, to be affirming, to grow them healthily and have a strong bond. That is one of the big things that, that is utilized by traffickers is when there's a weakness there and they'll take advantage of it. It's a very, it becomes a very easy thing because it's a male, male, you know, authority figure or older boyfriend. These are, these are taking the place of, of father relationships that, that you've just got to maintain it well. So becoming a studier of that subject is, mm-hmm. is a good idea for fathers. Um, I think that's really important. Um, then understanding grooming. So, so the thing you're looking for with kids is um, an ongoing relationship with anyone. May not just be boyfriend girlfriend. It could be just friends, but that causes ongoing isolation. More and more isolation of the child. More distancing. Um, usually, a change in behavior. 
Uh, there's a case that we were in lately where there was just this sharp change of behavior over a day or over a couple of days. Um, knowing that some things happened and, and being concerned at those times and, you know, I don't know. I just think that's often a point where something happened in their life. And uh, and if you can pinpoint that, then, then that's something to be concerned about. Sometimes it can just be a vulnerability has been opened, something they're not willing to tell you has happened. But, but building a relationship where you can get closer to that and talk through difficult things, um, that's really important. And then the grooming process, which can be one to three years, they'll keep going for a long time, oh, wow. building a relationship. And they'll, you'll start to see gifts. Um, I, you have to watch because the, the traffickers change their game all the time. They're trying to learn the best ways of doing this and not being detected. So I'm, I'm hearing less stories of gifts, which is interesting. It used to be, and, and if you see this, it's, a, it's not a good sign. Brand new iPhone, you know, expensive purse or yeah. shoes or whatever it is but gifting in a way that's that's over the top and that's kind of what in the cult world would be called love bombing so it's this constantly affirming because they're 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 you're trying to grow a kid you're trying to correct them suddenly an adult is there going no you're right you are strong you are better yeah. you're smarter than them you deserve this you know they, they'll they'll search their social media They'll they'll find ways to learn about them things that you wouldn't be able to learn from from a person normally, and then they'll use that as a vulnerability. If they, I, I I think I I could be a great singer. You're a great singer. Right. Out of nowhere, suddenly, they're saying things that they don't realize they've told already in public, on social media. But if they've got if they've you know because all they need is a connection through a friend, they can they can find them. So watching for that, watching for someone who's got someone in their life that's causing isolation, that's saying all these, you know, the opposite, you know, of what you're saying, um, you know, or, or just love bombing on them. And because they're trying to get trust and everything's perfect. Yeah. So I think you're watching for those signs. And, and if, if the, it's hard because that can be happening and nothing's happening. Like there can just be a real relationship where that's right. happening. But what you start to watch for is if they talk about, we're going to go on a trip to another state. Mm. That's usually something to be very concerned about. And then you want to reach out uh, to someone else in the, in the, uh, in, with expertise in the trafficking world because they can go check that individual. And we've had many cases where that's, that's a trafficker. And so, yeah, that's yeah. old, older, older, um, relationships definitely concerned so you watch watch for those things uh, you have to be careful people you can call out something that's not that you think is trafficking and it's not um so that can be difficult but i know like the airlines have made that mistake where they've seen a kid and not getting on with a parent like something's wrong here they call uh, out trafficking well, it's not yeah. trafficking you know but at the same time the risk of it you've got to be aware and watching and it, it calls for us all to be a lot more tuned into what's happening with with the people around us. Yeah, that's kind of what I uh, realized when I was listening to uh, one of the overcomers talk about, uh, you know, that eleven to fourteen mm -hmm. and social media and you know how we all present a certain face. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it really takes us as parents or anyone to just kind of just stop and say, "Hey, is everything okay?" Yeah, you know. Or, or well, and it's really just building a real relationship with your kids, and and that's if there's anything I've learned over years, most parents are so busy just trying to hold it all together, they forget to really build a relationship with their kids and start talking about things and yeah. building in connection. Um, it's very easy in our busy world to just keep them moving, you know, keep them going to things, keep going yeah. to their events and <laughs> that's enough and I'm trying to do a job and I'm doing this and um, it's really making time to build connection. Yeah, that's also what they were saying too because if there's that connection, nothing will penetrate that. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, yeah. Well, and and parenting's tough. You're you're it, always it you're always getting it wrong. Like the, <laughs> you're you're naturally not going to be perfect as a parent. Yeah. We're human beings, so it's not about perfection or or feeling like things are hopeless. But it's really about just just knowing that your kid is like you, because they came from you, and you can really you can really work on that. Yeah. You know, but it's 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 a uh, it's a tough job for anybody. But um, I think just knowing the possibilities and some of the signs will will help everybody. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think also, too, to reiterate uh, what you and Red M are is talking about the issue, 
and getting involved. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I would uh, press upon anyone to uh, go down in the description, and you've got some, I guess, some, there's uh, some URLs. Can yeah. you share those, and we'll, well definitely put we anything can, else? Yeah, we're definitely joinredm.com. That's an easy way to engage. All social channels. We have uh, the Join, Join Red M channel on YouTube is quite helpful. Some educational stuff there. You can listen to people who've been trafficked, people who do rescue work. There's a lot of different things. The leadership course is on there as well. We've, we did the first class already. Um, so that's good on YouTube. Uh, Instagram, Join Red M the Movement. Facebook, Join Red M the Movement. And LinkedIn, Join Red M the Movement. So you can you can find us. Excellent. You said you got some events coming up too as well? Or? We do. If I think next is a, we've got a gala coming up for Redeemed called Keep Houston Free. Um, we have Conscious Leadership in August, which will be a... Um, uh, the second of the three-part series. Um, so that'll hopefully be at the ION. We're working on that. Uh, we have the launch of uh, 1211 Partners, which that'll be in October. Um, what else have we got? We're going to have an airport event probably first week of October at Ellington Field. So that's going to be a, a larger group that we're going to try and do the same thing. Oh, great. Bit of yeah, education. Yeah, a nice facility they have there with all the old planes and everything. Yeah, well, there. and United has a new hangar, so they're they're letting oh, us work okay. in the new hangar. So that'll, oh, that'll be great. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a fun event for sure. Mm-hmm. So, well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to yeah. talk with us today. Thanks for all that you are doing, your team is doing. And uh, I hopefully uh, want to uh, thank in advance anyone that's listening to this to, to talk and to uh, somehow get involved in some way. And uh, please keep us, uh, you know, in touch if there's anything that we can do to help promote things and then also uh, come back and share any uh, updates that you have or anything else that you want to talk about. You're welcome anytime. Great. Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm.